All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another fun mod, this time in the form of Deep Freeze Continued, which is actually a resurrection of a mod that was previously created and subsequently abandoned by one Scott Paladin way back in Kerbal Space Program version 0.25, but it has now been brought back to life by the wonderful JPL Repo, and I couldn't be happier because this mod is just so much fun. I really love it because what it adds into the game is the ability for you to cryogenically freeze your Kerbals. For instance, say if you have a long deep space mission, you can freeze them for the duration of the journey. And I, I love having that ability. It makes me happy. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, what use does that have? Now, if you're just playing regular old vanilla Kerbal Space Program, honestly, it doesn't change much. It just gives you that ability to freeze them. But if you have a life support mod installed, for instance, Snacks, which I have installed for the purposes of this episode here, what will happen when they're frozen is that the Kerbals who are frozen will not consume life support resources because, well, they're in cryogenic freezing. So, yes, they aren't going to consume, say, if you have TAC life support installed, they aren't going to consume oxygen or water or anything like that for snacks. They won't eat any of the snacks in the vessel. They are frozen until you thaw them down the road. And I love that because, for instance, again, like with a deep space mission, that means that you can have the ability to take less supplies with you to give yourself a nice little safety net of things. And plus, it would free up space in your ship for more important scientific instrumentation. So, let us first jump into the VAB to take a look at the parts that get added in by this mod. And we will then go and take a look at a ship that I already have on the launch pad to show you how it all works. Now, let's just grab a random Mark 1 lander can for size comparisons. And first, head down to Utility, where you will find... The CRY 2300 Cryonic Freezing Chamber, which is, well, the chamber where you freeze the Kerbals. And it can freeze 10 Kerbals. This baby has a crew capacity of 10. That is a lot of frozen green Kerbals. And it makes me laugh. I don't know why, but it does. And besides freezing your Kerbals, you'll also notice that it does actually also hold snacks. Now, this mod should be compatible with any life support mod that you install. So if you have tech life support, you should have some other resources here. But for me, I have snacks installed. So it holds 2,000 snacks, which which honestly, I think is a little bit excessive. Maybe maybe tone down the number of snacks there. And you'll also see that there is another resource called Glycorol here, which we'll get into in a moment. But first, let's just grab this baby and pop it onto here and take a look at the absolutely gorgeous model that this thing has. It is beautiful. You know me, I'm a sucker for the fine details on modeling and texturing. So just, you know, these cool pipes here with their labeling, uh, the nice details of the hatches, the deep freeze logo there. Very cool indeed. I love this thing. Now, size-wise, as you can see, it is pretty big compared to the Mark I Lander can. It's essentially two hitchhiker storage containers stacked on top of one another. And, uh, of course, it does hold many more Kerbals. The hitchhiker container, yes, only holds four, whereas this baby holds ten, or yes, yes, ten, ten Kerbals to freeze. And it does also have its own internal view, which I definitely enjoy, because a lot of mods that add larger containers like this, they just copy and paste the hitchhiker container. This one has its own unique internal view, though it is still really buggy. We'll get into that once we're over on the launch pad. Uh, but yes, I mentioned the Glycorol resource here, and now you can find additional Glycorol over here in fuel tanks. We have these little radial tanks here, which you can just strap onto the side, and these will hold 20 Glycorol overall, and that is going to be important because Glycorol is a necessity for freezing your Kerbals. Every Kerbal you freeze will consume five units of Glycorol 
as well as 3,000 electrical charge. Because, of course, you're freezing a Kerbal. That's, that's not exactly a low-intensity thing. You've got to use a lot of power to do it. And the Glycorol is essentially an antifreeze to pump into their bodies to make sure their bloodlines don't crystallize, I guess. And so, yes, yeah, so five units per Kerbal, which means on this freezing chamber, it holds ten. That means you need 50 Glycorol to freeze all of the guys in here, whereas this only holds 40. And so you're going to need at least one of these little extra tanks if you plan on freezing your whole crew. But the thing is, that's just for the one-way journey. If you unfreeze them, which when you do thaw your Kerbals, that also does take 3,000 electrical charge, but it does not consume any Glycorol. But if you thaw them out when they get to their destination, when you head back home, you're gonna need even more glycerol. Thus why you have these little exterior tanks. You can hook a lot of them to the side of the ship, and you should be good. And well, that's the basis of how the system works. Again, five glycerol and 3,000 electrical charge to freeze each Kerbal, and then just 3,000 electrical charge to thaw them out down the road. Now, one thing to be noted, the electrical charge consumption can actually be changed by a config file that is included in the mod. Uh, you have to do that uh, in the folders, though, not inside the game. But the, the mod maker is hoping to add in-game ability to change that later on down the road, which would be nice. So if you wanted to make it more difficult to freeze your Kerbals or easier, you could do that. But the Glycorol does seem to be a hard-coded thing that does that they don't plan on changing, which I'm perfectly okay with that. But let's head out to the launch pad where I have a lovely little ship with four Kerbals in it, three of whom are ready to be frozen. So if we just go to the deep freeze craft, we have Jebediah up in the uh, command pod and everyone else down in here. Now, how you freeze your Kerbals? You do it by the use of this deep freeze menu right here, which can be reached either by clicking on the toolbar up here or right clicking on the freezing chamber and you can toggle the menu. Now you'll also notice that we can freeze and subsequently thaw our Kerbals from here as well, but uh, I like this UI. It's, it's much nicer and cleaner and also much more informative because uh, you'll notice that currently all these Kerbals have their names in white and there are currently no Kerbals Frozen is in blue. That changes. Once a Kerbal is frozen, their name changes to blue. So it's it's just a nice, easier way to vis visualize which Kerbals are and are not frozen. And I do also enjoy that it has the profession and the vessel. Uh, the vessel is here because in the tracking station, you can also access this menu minus the freezing. You cannot freeze and thaw your Kerbals from the tracking station, but you can see who's frozen, what their prof profession is, and then what vessel they're on so that you can then find that vessel in the tracking station, go to it, and freeze and thaw at your will. Quite fun times. Now, before we go into any freezing, let us go and look at the internal view. And yes, look at this just beautiful interior. I really like it with all the piping, the cool cryo chambers everywhere. But as I said, a little bit glitchy, as you can see Valentina Kermit over there is kind of halfway inside of her cryo chamber. And you also may notice that there is a large breach in the hole over there and in every direction. It's, uh, it's still very much a work in progress, but still very cool looking. I cannot wait to see how it looks when it is completely finished. Now, one thing to note, again, they are kind of clipping through their cryo chambers, but once you freeze them, they actually disappear from in here. So while they're unfrozen, you can access their camera, look around. But say if we froze Valentina, she would then not no longer be in this internal view. Technically, she would be frozen inside of that chamber there, which is interesting way to go about it. But it is it is one thing to be noted. So if we we will go back to the camera here in a moment after we freeze someone to demonstrate that. Now before we do. We'll open up snacks and you'll see that currently we have four crew and a duration of 538 days on our mission. Now, if we freeze Bill, there we go. Now that'll consume five of the glycerol and we used 3000 energy, which is of course coming back nicely from our solar panels. 
We now have Bill frozen. It takes about 30 seconds to do, and you'll see his name is now in blue, and his button over here is changed to Thaw, and he is no longer over in this selectable area. And if we go to Valentina here, you'll notice that Bill is no longer sitting next to Bob there. He is, in fact, completely gone from the ship. And thus, he is no longer consuming any resources from the ship. Technically. Uh, there is kind of a bug at the moment. If you notice, we still technically have four crew on the snack supply, and the duration is still 538 days. That is a weird little glitch. Bill is gone, but we're still consuming the same, same amount of supplies. Now, how you can fix that is you just basically have to reload the ship, and you can do that by either escaping out and going back to the space center, or alternatively, just send one of your crew on EVA, and then have him board the ship again, and you'll notice that now it has updated to three crew, and now a duration of 717 days. So yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a bug right now where you have to basically reset the ship for it to count, but it, it does still work, it just requires a quick little reset. That is, of course, unless you're using TAC Life Support. TAC Life Support has a much bigger bug. Uh, their problem is, it once you thaw a Kerbal, TAC Life Support assumes that they then need to be fed every resource they should have had while they were frozen. So if they've been frozen for like a year, that Kerbal is going to consume a year's worth of resources. <laughs> which isn't a good thing. Now, how you can avoid that is by freezing them on the launch pad before you go. So if we froze all of our Kerbals here, and if we had TAC Life Support installed, we'd be fine, because we froze them on the launch pad. But if we froze them in space, you actually have to exit out entirely from your save game to the main menu and reload. If you don't, then it's going to keep track of all those resources, and once you thaw them, they're going to consume all of it. So that is something to keep in mind. You've definitely got to watch that. Uh, but that is a problem with TAC life support right now. All the other life support mods should work just fine, barring the little reset thing. Like, all the Kerbals are currently frozen, except for Jebediah, but we still have three. So, EVA, there we are, and then board again. Excellent, there we go. We now are only consuming for one crew member, and he can last 2,150 days. And right there should show you why this could be such an important asset for a deep space mission. Just one crew, or pretend potentially, have a probe core up here, and have all the crew sleeping for the duration of the mission until they reach their final destination at the far end of the solar system. Wake them all up, then they can consume supplies, then before you head them back home, put them back to sleep. And it all goes well. Now to thaw them out, you just do the same thing that you did earlier by hitting the thaw button. It will consume, as I mentioned earlier, 3000 electrical charge, and yeah, then after about 30 seconds, they will become unfrozen. Now, a few other things to mention. As for future plans for the mod, they are hoping to add a smaller freezer. Right now, this is, yeah, again, 10 Kerbals. They're hoping to add a four to six Kerbal one and potentially even a single Kerbal freezer. Um, also, of course, finishing the internal view. They're also thinking of adding in continuous electrical usage for the freezing chamber, which I like that idea, because it doesn't make sense that you just use 3,000 to freeze them and then you're good. Now, you'd need continual electrical charge to actually keep track of them, and also the potential for electrical control, or temperature controls, rather, coming into play in the future, perhaps. And, of course, ensuring compatibility with as many life support mods as possible. Uh, but overall, a very, very cool mod. I really like it, and the compatibility is great. I've tried it out with two different life support mods, and it worked. Uh, it should be good with any of them. It is also compatible with Ship Manifest for tr crew transfers, as well as, oh god, what's it called? Uh, connected Living Space. It's compatible with that as well, so you shouldn't have any problem moving your crew around. 
Uh, even with this whole freezing system, you'll be able to pop them in here to freeze them at your whims. Very cool indeed. So if you would like to give it a try, you can check out the link in the description as always. And of course, I do hope you check it out. It is just wonderful. I really do enjoy this mod. Just the fact, even without life support, I like the idea of freezing my Kerbals for a deep space mission. It just... It feels like a good roleplay thing to do, even if you don't have a life support mod installed. But if you do have a life support mod installed, it's it'll save your resources, and that is just great. But yes, that is going to be all for today, so I hope you have enjoyed this episode, and of course that you come back for the next when we will be looking at hopefully yet another fun mod. But until then, thank you for watching, my friends, and as always, have a good one.